Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to click on today's video. If you are new, welcome. My name is Summer and I'm currently on a financial journey to pay off all of my debt while saving money at the same time. Here on my channel, I am documenting my financial journey to financial freedom and I film content on budgeting, saving money, paying off debt, and anything money related. If that is content that you are interested in, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and definitely consider hitting that subscribe button to join me on my financial journey. I would love to have you become a part of the family. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and joining me for another video. I truly appreciate your support. So in today's video, we are going to be setting up my 2023 budget and I will be sharing with you guys what I will be using for 2023 to budget with along with my 2023 financial goals. So let's go ahead and get into today's video. The box set you can purchase off of her website, thebudgetbomb.com. And the box set is just like her Budget by Paycheck workbook. However, in the box set, you do get monthly booklets. Each month has a booklet. Put this back to the side. Each month has its own booklet. I really like having the booklets because they are small and I can carry them with me and they fit right into my planner. I do use the Budget Bombs Live Rich Planner and I just like that I can just put the booklet inside and carry it with me while I'm on the go. I am on the go a lot, so I like to have my booklet with me so when my son is doing sports, I can update my tracker and work on my budget in the car or I can do it at work during my lunch break as well. So you do get the 12 monthly booklets and then you also get this instructions and yearly spending book. I did not use this last year, but I am going to be using it this year. And that is what we are going to be setting up today in this video. So let's go ahead and look at the instructions and yearly spending. If you are new to budgeting, you do not need to use the Budget Moms Budget by Paycheck Workbook to do your budgeting. I personally really like all of her products. I think she did a really good job on keeping things very detailed and it helps you to definitely organize your finances. And I've seen much success using her program. This will be the third year that I am using her program. So in the beginning, it just has the budget by paycheck and it just has some um, instructions and then it goes over each section in her workbook. So it's nice to have that to refer back to. So the first thing that we are gonna be doing today is we are going to be setting up our financial plan. This is the financial plan goal worksheet and it has you set up your goals into three different categories. Short-term goals, which is something you want to accomplish within one year. Medium-term goals, goals that you want to accomplish within five years. And long-term goals, goals that you want to accomplish within 10 to 15 years. This year, I have had a hard time deciding my financial goals. I've been doing a lot of thinking and reflecting on it. And I think that defining your financial goals is definitely very important. And I want you guys to know there's no right or wrong answer to your financial goals. Everyone's financial goals are going to look different. And it's also okay when creating your financial goals to incorporate needs and wants. Needs are something necessary to live and function, which are going to be your mandatory fixed expenses. Wants are something you choose to buy but could live without. And those are going to be like your variable expenses. And it's okay to have both wants and needs in your financial plan. In fact, a lot of my goals are going to be a variety of wants and needs. As you get further on your financial journey, I think that you might start having 
a lot more wants as you reach your goals. So for short term goals, the goals that I want to accomplish within one year is I would like to increase my emergency funds. If you're just starting out, a good starter emergency fund is to have a goal to save a thousand dollars. I know that a thousand dollars is not a lot, and I think that an emergency fund should be more than a thousand dollars. Typically, an emergency fund should be about three to six months of expenses. I do not have that in my emergency fund. Three to six months of expenses hasn't really been a priority for me because I do have a very secure job. I am a tenured teacher, so I do have reliable income. So I've been comfortable with having a $1,000 emergency fund while I've been paying off debt and saving for other goals. But now that I am further in my financial journey, I definitely want to beef up my emergency fund. And I would like to start off by setting a goal to have three to six months of expenses in my emergency fund. My next goal that I would like to accomplish this year is I want to pay off my car. And then I also want to pay off my Peloton spin bike. And then I also want to pay off my cell phone. And then lastly, the last short term goal, goal that I have would be a kitchen renovation. I would love to be able to paint my cabinets in my kitchen white as well as get new kitchen appliances. I would like to buy a new fridge, microwave, stove, and dishwasher. So a little bit of a small kitchen re renovation I would like to accomplish this year. On this section in the budget by paycheck workbook for your financial plan goal worksheet. It does have a spot for you to write the estimated cost and target date. I don't really have an estimated cost um, for the kitchen renovation. I would say it's going to be about $12,000 actually. The cabinets are going to be about 3000 and then I think the appliances will cost about $9,000. So let's just put $12,000. My target date is to have the kitchen renovation done by this time next year. So let's just put 1-1-2024. I would like to pay off my cell phone. I think my cell phone and Peloton, they have less than $500. Let's just go ahead and put $500 on the estimated cost. And I would like to have those two paid off by July. So let's put July 30th, 2023. And I believe my car has a little less than $4,000. So let's just put estimated cost at $4,000. And ideally, I would love to have that paid off by March. I plan to use money that I get from my, my tax return to pay off my car. So let's put March 1st, 2023. And then to increase my emergency fund, I would like to increase my emergency fund, but I don't have an estimated cost right now. Right now, I'm just going to work on putting money towards that as I get it, but I don't have an exact amount. Ideally, I said I would love to have six months expenses, but I know that that's not going to be something I'll be able to accomplish within this year. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep that blank. So the next section talks about your medium term goals, and these are goals that you want to accomplish within five years. 
within five years I would like to be able to purchase my dream car in cash right now my dream car is the Porsche Macan that could change I really do want to own a Porsche um, estimated cost it's probably going to I'm not even exactly sure how much it's gonna be I would probably say sixty five thousand dollars that might be not enough but let's just go ahead and put that I'm not gonna put a target date I definitely want to pay cash for my next car so it may be within five years it may be within ten years but it is good to um, have goals and then my next goal in the next five years, I would love to travel outside of the U.S. I'm not even sure where I would want to go right now or how much that's going to cost, but I know that that's something that I want to do. And then my last five-year goal would be a bathroom renovation. I would like to renovate both bathrooms in my home. There's two bathrooms. I'd like to redo the whole bathroom so redo the tub the sink area put new light fixtures um, redo the flooring so that is definitely going to be a big project I'm not sure how much that's going to cost but I'm just going to add that for something that I want to do and then in the next 10 to 15 years I would love to purchase a rental property So purchase my second home as well as have my um, condo paid off. So pay off my condo. And then I do have one more short term goal that I would like to accomplish this year. It is definitely a want, but I would love to be able to buy myself a designer handbag. I'm not even sure which one I would want, um, but I know that I do want to buy a designer handbag. It's something that I've wanted, but it has not been in the budget. But when I pay off my car, I would like to treat myself to a designer handbag. The next section in this book is the memberships and subscriptions. I do not know of any memberships and subscriptions that I have that are due yearly. I do have some monthly ones that I do budget for in my fixed expenses, so I don't need to put them here as a reminder. But if something does come up this year, I will go ahead and write it down so that I have it for next year. The next page in this workbook is your yearly saving goals and events. So let's see what this page is. The yearly savings tracker. The yearly savings tracker worksheet allows you to track the beginning and ending balance each month for each goal. The sinking funds you defined on the yearly saving goals and events. So if you missed my 2023 sinking funds or what I'm going to be saving for in 2023, go ahead and check out that video. I will link it above for you to check out. So for your yearly savings goals and events, this booklet only allows you to track eight of your goals and events. I believe I had 11 sinking funds, but I did go ahead and pick out eight which i guess are the top ones that i would want to track since i only have eight slots so we're going to be tracking the following um goals in this book the first one is going to be the back to school i really like this page i didn't use it before but it's going to be a good way for um me to see my progress each month so back to school the yearly goal was a thousand dollars um monthly amount i personally do not like to do my sinking funds monthly i like to save for a couple of sinking funds a month 
but if you like to track yours monthly, you will take your yearly goal and divide it by 12, and that will get you the amount that you'll need to save every month. It says $83.33. I don't like to work with change, so I'm just going to put $84. And the goal, I said I wanted to save this by July 1st. So I'll go ahead and put that. 2023. My next goal is to save for my car maintenance. This one does not have a yearly goal or a monthly amount, and it's going to be ongoing. We're going to continue to be saving for it all year. The next goal that we are going to be saving for is Christmas. Our yearly goal is $1,500. And if we take 1,500, that means we would have to save $125 a month. And this is going to be due, we wanna save for Christmas by 11, 1, 23, so November, November 1st. These monthly amounts don't really add up because not all of the goals are going to be saving for a month. Ideally, in the perfect world, I would like to start saving for my sinking funds a year in advance. So I would have liked to start saving for back to school last July. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep these the same. So as my income does increase or I have more money, I would like to be able to put that amount in. Grocery hauls is going to be the fourth thing we are going to be tracking. And grocery hauls does not have a yearly goal or due date. It's going to be an ongoing sinking fund. The next thing that we are going to be tracking is my kitchen cabinets for my home improvement. So I'm just going to put home improvement. And this will be my kitchen cabinets. I want to get them painted white. And the yearly goal is to save $4,000. So if we take $4,000 and divide it by 12, the monthly amount would be $333 a month. And I believe I said I wanted to, I don't really have a due date. Ideally, I would like to get this done by this time next year. So I'm just gonna put one, one two thousand twenty four and the goal amount is four thousand dollars hopefully i'll be able to get this sooner but if not it's okay it might even take longer the next thing that we are going to be saving for is home maintenance the home maintenance i do not have a goal amount or a due date it is going to be a ongoing sinking fund The next thing that I'm going to be saving for is my self-care. This does not have a yearly goal and it's going to be an ongoing sinking fund. And lastly, I want to save for my son's sports. His sports do not have a yearly goal. It's going to be ongoing as well. 
So on this sheet, it has all of my goals. So we're going to be, I have 11 sinking funds, but we're only going to be tracking eight of them. And then when we turn the page, it has our yearly savings tracker. So it is going to have all of um, our goals. So this first two pages is to track goals number one through four. And we actually are going to be getting the year with zero dollars in all of our sinking funds. So I'm just going to put we're going to begin with zero dollars. But I do like this visual because when I open up my workbook, I'll be able to see how much money I have in each sinking fund at a glance. And so that's why on the first page, it doesn't have room for you to write the title, but I'll just be able to go back to this page and know which goals are which and then update these monthly. If you would like to see me update my yearly savings tracker in this workbook, just go ahead and leave that in the comment section. It's not something that I filmed before, but I wouldn't mind um, filming that if that is something that you guys want to see. So then next, it just is the same thing, but on this one, you're tracking your goals five through eight, and these sinking funds are gonna start with $0 for the year as well. I'm hoping next year that when I'm setting this up, I will have some rollover amount in the sinking funds, but I'm not there yet. That is definitely a goal of mine. This next page is a sheet for you to track your sinking funds, a visual. I personally am not going to be using this sheet. I feel like it's just gonna be overkill. I do like to use the Budget Moms sinking fund envelopes and on her envelope, she has a visual on each envelope. If you're a person that likes to see everything at once, I could totally see why you would want to see this because you can get a quick visual of all of your sinking funds at one time. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use my envelopes as the visual and then I will use the yearly savings tracker um, just to see the number numbers. Okay, the next section is the yearly spending overview. I did not use this last year or the previous year, but I definitely would like to use it. So let's see what the yearly spending overview is. This worksheet allows you to track your spending in each of your categories across the entire year in one table. The categories are those you determine by tracking your expenses on the monthly expense tracker worksheet and track monthly on your monthly budget category breakdown worksheet. Okay, so if you missed my video where I set up my budget categories for the year, you can go ahead and check out that video if you want some ideas on budget categories to use in your budget but I did go ahead and create my budget categories and um, the video is already up on my YouTube. So I'm simply going to take these categories and add it to the yearly spending overview. That way I can see each month how much I spend in that category. So my first category is going to be debt. Second category is food. My third category is housing. My fourth category is utilities. My fifth category is savings. My sixth category is transportation. My seventh category is medical. My eighth category is personal care. My ninth category is Jaden, who is my son. My 10th category is entertainment. My 11th category is work slash business. And then the last category, my 12th category is miscellaneous. 
So I'm really looking forward to using this page. That way I can see how the months change and if I'm staying consistent with my food budget or if it is changing. I am assuming that some of these categories will change, like my food budget might change um, in the summer when we are out of school and spending more money on the groceries or during holiday months where we are hosting and needing to purchase more groceries. But I'm excited to see that. That way, definitely tracking my yearly spending is going to help me be able to make a realistic budget each month the following year. So where this is going to be for the year 2023. The next section is your yearly balance overview. It allows you to track your savings balance, your debt balance, your retirement balance, and your net worth. I did not use this page either. This is going to be for 2023, but I definitely want to start tracking my retirement balance. That way I know how much is in there. And I should start thinking about retirement. That's not something that I have been thinking about, but it's definitely something that I need to start thinking about. And I have not tracked my net worth, but as my debt is going down, I would like to start tracking my net worth. So on this balance overview, it gives you a section to choose two things that you want to track. So two goals that I have for 2023 is that I want to save $5,000. And here is a little visual graph where I will be able to graph my progress. I'm going to be starting off with $0 and the goal is to get the $5,000. My second goal for 2023 is I want to pay off $4,499 in debt. So that would make me debt free with the exception of my student loans. So this amount will cover the amount for my car, the balance on my car loan, the balance on my cell phone, and then the balance on my Peloton spin bike. So I definitely want to have all of those paid off this year. And then the last um, page is a bill tracker. And I will fill this out later. Now that I am about three years into my budgeting journey, or this is going to be year three, I'm going to be starting year three um, on January 1st, I'm going to list all of my bills and then their due dates and then um, the amount I think what I'm going to do, this is a way for you to track if you paid that bill. However, I'm going to use this to just track how much it costs each month. That way I will be able to see how my electricity bill is fluctuating each month. I'm not going to use it to track my bills. I do use my um, budget calendar to track my bills. So that is a look at how I'm setting up my budget for 2023. Here is a look at the booklet that comes in it. The last page actually was a medical bill. I don't have any medical bills, so I will not be filling out that page. Okay, so here's a look at the booklet. So each month gets its own booklet. And at the beginning of the book, it's like a trifold. It just has a little quote this one says dear future i'm ready and then when you open up the booklet it has a place for you to write who the book belongs to if it's found um, who they can contact so when you are move this out the way the first page in the booklet is the monthly calendar i use this as my budget calendar to track all of I write down um, my paydays. I only get paid once a month, but if you get paid multiple times a month, you would want to write those dates on your calendar. You want to write out when all of your bills are due. And then I also use this bill calendar to track appointments and events. So like for January 1st, I would put my son's birthday. Um, writing your um, events 
and appointments just helps you to create a realistic budget. So if you know you have something coming up, it will allow you to um, plan for that event accordingly. Then it has thoughts and notes. So you can write some thoughts and notes about how your month went, what went well, um, improvements you would like to make um, for next month or just any other notes that you might have. And then all of um, her workbooks does come with five paycheck budget trackers. So it comes with five. Um, her method is a budget by paycheck. So every time you get paid, you will fill out a paycheck budget tracker. I am a monthly, I am an employee who gets paid once a month. So I do not use all of her sheets. I do like to create a draft budget. So prior to the month, I like to create a draft of things that I have coming up. Although I am a salary employee, my income does fluctuate quite a bit in the sense that lately, um, since COVID, we are trying to close that gap of education that students missed out. There has been an opportunity to work extra hours. So on top of my salary, I am um, paid a extra rate to work extra hours. And that rate is um, quite a generous rate, I would have to say. Um, the hourly rate is $75 an hour. I have gotten some questions about how my income has um, been able to increase. And that is why I have been working some extra hours where I am teaching intervention two days a week, an hour each time at $75 an hour. Plus, um, there are some other committees that um, I have joined to help increase my income as well. So I will use that to do my monthly budget for when I get paid. And then I'll usually create a draft of how much the bare minimum I'm expecting. And then when I find out how much money I've gotten for overtime, I will redo my numbers with that amount. And then I also use this paycheck budget tracker to budget any extra income that I might receive. So my income taxes or if I got a raise and they needed to give us a um, check because our raises do get pro rated back to the start of our contract. So I just got a raise. So I'm expecting a check that's going to cover the beginning of July all the way until when that um, check gets issued. So I'll do that for that. As well as if I do get a YouTube paycheck, I will use this paycheck budget tracker to budget out my YouTube paycheck. And it comes with five of those. And then it does have after your paycheck budget tracker, it does have a expense tracker for you to track your expenses and then go back and highlight using the highlighter method. And then it has a debt payment plan for you to um, fill out. That way you can see your monthly debt progress and your overall debt progress. And then it has a section for you to fill out your monthly net worth tracker. I have not previously filled out this. I would like to start filling it out. It's not something that I've done in the past, but I would like to know what my net worth is and I would like to track how um, it changes month to month. And then it does have a place for you to fill out where did my money go. Um, that way you can see exactly where your money went to, um, what your starting balance was, your earned income, your other income. Um, how much savings you use, your total monthly inflow, and then you'll track your categories, um, how much you budgeted, how much you spent, the difference, and then the percent of total for your monthly info. So this will allow you to really see where all of your money went. And then this is where did my money go monthly debt and savings breakdown. So you can see how much money you put towards debt, how much money you put towards saving. And then you can track your debt categories and then the amount of your income that went to that category. And then the same thing for savings. I have not previously filled this section out, but I would love to fill that out this year. 
And then on this one, it's just where did my money go? Monthly spending comparison um, where you can compare. I would compare December to January since I did not do this in December. I would end up comparing January to February. So I wouldn't be able to start this until February and then you'll be able to see the changed amount. And then last thing in this booklet is her monthly meal plan. I did not fill this out last year, but I'm going to be filling this out this year. I just think having a monthly meal plan is definitely going to help me decrease my food spending. I want to have a plan and then I definitely want to be able to create meals based on what I currently have in my pantry and fridge. Well, that is a look at the materials that I'm going to be using for 2023 and my 2023 financial goals. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, please give this video a thumbs up and definitely consider hitting that subscribe button to join me on my financial journey. I would love to have you become a part of the family. How are you guys doing with um, your 2023 budget, budget goals? And are you going to be using the same things that you used in 2022? Or are you going to be making any changes? I would love to hear that in the comment section as well as let me know what you thought about this video or if you have any suggestions or anything that you would like to see in any incoming videos. I definitely like to engage with you guys in the comment section. So go ahead and leave me a comment. Well, I hope that you guys have an amazing day and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Bye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It definitely helps out my channel and I truly appreciate your support.